Good morning, everybody. I hope that everybody uh, sprung forward this morning and not crawled forward like I did. Uh, and we are so glad that you are with us today at East Point Baptist Church. I see a few, a few sleepy faces out there. Uh, so as you stand and we begin in worship today, uh, just say, wake up to your neighbor. Have you been to Jesus for his cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood and the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white? You did wake up on time this morning. Uh, I woke up early, but it's good to be here. If you are visiting with us for the first time, we want to welcome you uh, to East Point Baptist Church. One of the ways you can participate in that is in the seat pocket in front of you is a card that looks just like this. If you'll just take that and fill it out and place it in the offering plate at the close of the service. Also on the back, this is for everyone, there's a place for prayer requests and praise reports. If you have a prayer need or something you just want to Praise the Lord for, please write that down and place that in the offering plate as well. Just a few announcements and we'll have our official welcome time. Next Sunday is our official Annie Armstrong Easter offering march. I know it's like a month before Easter, uh, but we always collect this offering about this time. You don't have to give next Sunday. You can give from now until Easter, but next Sunday we will have our official march. Our church's goal this year is ten thousand dollars and so i think maybe this may be the highest goal we've ever had for annie armstrong so uh, please pray that the lord will lead you uh, to give and how much also next sunday i'm excited about this because if you know me very well i get excited about food next sunday after sunday school we are having a covered dish luncheon and our, the church will be providing two hands so feel free to bring chicken or steak even if you want to do that. But please make sure you bring uh, a covered dish uh, and, and we'll all sit down and break bread together. There will be bread there, I promise. Uh, also, on Sunday, March 24th, our children's uh, ministry is doing a, their spring arts, crafts, plant, and bake sale. It gets bigger every year. Uh, it used to just be kind of a a craft sale. Now it's uh, it's uh, arts, crafts, plants, and bake sale. So you can get plants for your yard and food uh, there at that too. So uh, if you would like to donate items, please see Kelly Isbell about that. That's always a fun time, and it helps our kids raise money for for ministries and camp and stuff like that. So please. Uh, Make sure you go to that, buy something, and you can donate something. How about that? All right, I'm going to ask everyone to stand, find someone you haven't seen this morning, and go to them and welcome them to East Point Baptist Church.
I lift your name on high. We praise him for what he has done for us in our lives. Let's sing it. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show. praise this morning. All right. All hail the power of Jesus' name. pray that we would put you in your right place this morning because of what you've done and how you saved us. We love you. In Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. What heights, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ. 
give us life and life abundantly, but it came with a price. Here in the ground. There in the ground is what he story in one song, and that's why I love it, all right? Uh, Let's pray together in light of what we just heard. Dear Heavenly Father, we know the story, how you came as a baby, and you lived, you saved, and you died on a cross, Lord, and we pray that every Sunday would be Easter Sunday. As we look forward to what we will do to remember your son on the cross, we just pray that we would live in that light every single day of our lives, Lord, that there's no longer physical sacrifice of an animal but there was a sacrifice of your son to cover our sins we love you lord and you are the only way to salvation and we know that today in jesus name amen you may be seated Uh, our band and our choir will exit Um, and there's these people in the church okay they come here for i don't know 12 years and then they leave okay And then they come back someday, hopefully. And those are our college students, okay? We have a great bunch of college students. And uh, I think one's at Auburn and one's Alabama, so you can choose your favorite uh, up here this morning. But uh, they're going to sing a song called Death Was Arrested. And and it's kind of in the same vein as as an In Christ Alone. Uh, But it is a new way to tell the most important story in the world. in my sorrow and dead in my sin lost without hope with no place to begin your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began ash was redeemed only beauty remained from my 
chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your days so. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace, so is over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your Amen. Thank you so much. In your Bibles, turn to, uh, to Luke chapter 23, and also we'll be going to Ephesians chapter 2 uh, as well this morning. God, thank you for the opportunity to come together to study your word, to worship you, and Lord, to, uh, to celebrate our salvation only through your grace. Lord, I pray that no matter who we are, no matter how long we have been a believer, or maybe, Lord, we're not a believer yet, but Father, I pray that this morning that we would simply recognize that our salvation comes only through our faith in the finished work of Christ upon the cross. Remind us of that, Lord, and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. We have been in a series over the last several weeks on God's grace, and this is the, uh, the close of the series on grace, and I could not think of a better way to close it out than to really focus on our offer of salvation that comes only through God's grace. And so, just two things this morning. This will be a very simple message, but just two things that I'd like to say as we begin. Number one is, 
if you are already a Christian, if you are a, uh, a follower, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're a disciple of Christ, then let this morning be a time where you say, thank you, God, for the grace that you poured out upon me. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, uh, a grace gift that allowed me to be saved. Lord, thank you for that. I praise you for that. I just, uh, I, I can never thank you enough for that. Lord, thank you for my salvation that was made possible through your grace. Maybe you're here this morning and you are not a Christian. You are not a believer in Jesus Christ. You're not saved. I would say this to, to you. If you find yourself uh, in that situation, then that can all be changed today. We cannot earn our way to Jesus. You can't join enough churches to come to Jesus. You just, just can't. Salvation is all by God's grace by us placing our faith in Christ. And so if you are here today and you have never received Christ as your Savior, if you've never placed your faith in the finished work of Christ, then today that can happen. That's different than just joining the church. So if you're here today and maybe you've heard the story of Jesus, maybe you've heard the story of, of salvation, maybe a few times or maybe a long time, maybe your whole life, but you've never made that real in your life, you've never made that decision, then why not today? Number one is this. We can do nothing to earn our salvation. I'll just repeat that. We can do nothing to earn our salvation. Scripture recounts the, uh, the story in Luke chapter 23 of the crucifixion, the account of our Lord's death. And in Luke chapter 23, verse 39 through 43, there's the account of the two criminals that were crucified on either side of Jesus. In Luke chapter 23, verse 39, we read that one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Verse 40 says, the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong, referring to Jesus. And Scripture teaches that many, many times that Jesus was the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. In verse 42, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth today, you will be with me in paradise. So, two thieves on either side of Jesus. <clears throat> One is unrepentant, and the other is repentant. And evidently, it was a genuine, heartfelt repentance because the man asked for Jesus to remember him, and Jesus said, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. <clears throat> the point is this, that here was a man who was a criminal, a bad guy, and he was being crucified justly for what he had done. 
And apparently, when he called out to Jesus, he was doing so with sincerity. He was doing so in honesty. And Jesus said to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. I believe in our language today, Jesus was saying to this criminal, uh, today you are saved. Today you will be in heaven. Now here's this criminal that could do absolutely nothing. To gain his salvation. He couldn't say, okay, when I get off this cross, I'm going to church. Because he wasn't getting off the cross. He wasn't saying, man, I can't wait to get this over with. And you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be baptized. He, that wasn't going to happen. The guy was like that close to death. He didn't say, man, you know what, Jesus, uh, you're a really nice guy, and I've heard you've done good things for folks. And so, you know, if, if I'll get off this cross, then I'm going to change my life, and I'm going to be nice, and I'm going to be good like you are. That wasn't going to happen. This guy was dying on the cross. There's no way that he was going to be able to do anything that would be able to earn his salvation. just wasn't going to happen. He was not getting off that cross alive. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. This criminal, this thief, could do nothing to earn eternal life in and of himself. It just it was not going to happen. But Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Now in your Bibles, turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Remember, we can do nothing to earn our salvation. In e Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, those, ver those first several verses tell us who we are apart from Christ. Paul says, beginning in verse 1 in chapter 2, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. Paul paints a not-so-pretty picture of who we were before we came to faith in Christ. He's painting this picture for the Christians at Ephesus. He's teaching them and us as well who we are apart from a saving faith in Jesus Christ. He says, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. In a way, that reminds me that a dead person cannot do anything for himself or herself. Just can't. A dead person is dead. That's it. Nothing. I mean, nothing. In our lost spiritual state, apart from Christ as our Savior, we are spiritually dead people. Scripture does not paint a very pretty picture 
of, uh, of people without Christ. Now, loved by God, of course, and valuable, and, all, and I get that, and I know that, and I teach that, and I preach that, but without Christ in our lives, we're spiritually dead people. That's what Scripture describes us as. And a dead person can do nothing for himself or herself. This same passage uh, goes on to say uh, in verse 9, not by works so that no one can boast. <clears throat> Remember, we can do nothing to earn our salvation. The thief on the cross could do nothing. A dead person can do nothing. And then Paul says, it is not by works. If I could do anything to gain salvation on my own, it would be a work. It would be something that I could do apart from what Christ has already done. I cannot do anything. I cannot join this church or any other churches or a whole lot of churches to gain my salvation. I, that's a work. I can't do it. You can't do that. Nobody can do that. It can't be done. Spiritually, it just can't be done. It just can't. I can't join enough churches. Uh, I can't be good enough because Scripture tells us that there is no one good, no, not one. All of our righteous acts, what we call righteous acts, are actually filthy rags. I can do nothing to earn my salvation. And it doesn't matter how nice of a guy I may be or you might be. It doesn't matter how religious you or I might be or might be trying to be. It, it it's hard to really get that across. But when it comes to gaining salvation, those things mean nothing. Nothing. I have been a Christian for a good while, since I was about nine years old been in church virtually my whole life. Not perfect by any means. There are a lot of people that could tell you how imperfect I am. Not perfect. I'm not saying that. But been in church for a long time. And, um, been to seminary. Been to two seminaries. Been a pastor for a pretty good while now. <clears throat> none of that, absolutely none of that qualifies me for eternal life. It just doesn't. We can do nothing to earn our salvation. Imagine uh, your, your pastor, Rob Burns, all about 152 pounds of him or something like that, trying to go up against an NFL uh, defensive lineman. Right? I mean, I'm getting, I can't do it. I mean, I can't go up against the Little League football players. I, I just can't do it. I mean, I'm going to get flattened every time. Can't be done. Imagine me trying to hit a, uh, a Major League Baseball 
pitcher. I mean, I just, if he throws a pitch, man, I, I'm not even going to see it. <laughs> it's just going to go right. I can't, I just can't do it. When it comes to our salvation, if we are not at that point in our lives yet, somewhere along the line, we've got to get to the point to where we understand that there's nothing I can do to gain my salvation. It can't be done. I can't join the church. I can't be baptized. I can't sing in the choir. I can't be in a committee. I can't be in youth group. I can't go on mission trips. None of that stuff qualifies me to be saved, and none of that stuff, none of it, none of it gains me eternal life. Number two is this. We express our faith in Christ alone for our salvation. We express our faith in Christ alone for our salvation. And, and I make a point of saying alone, and, 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 and this is the reason. Sometimes we think it's, well, I'm going to place my faith in Christ and I'm going to join the church. Well, that's just wonderful. I'm just glad that you're in the church. <laughs> but being in the church doesn't save you. I'm going to uh, I'm going to place my faith in Christ and I'm going to get baptized. It's nice to be baptized, but don't depend on baptism for salvation. I'm going to place my faith in Christ and man, I'm going to change the way I'm living. I'm going to be a different person now. Well, that's just great. God wants us to be different people, but we need to understand I'm not saved by faith plus being a different person. I'm not. Now, I believe we're different people. Paul was a different person. I believe that we are different people when we come to faith in Christ, but it's not like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to say yes to Jesus, and man, I'm going to change the way I'm living. No, I can't have faith in anything that I do. Now, if I know Christ is my Savior, is my life going to change? Yes, it is, but it is going to change because Christ is working in my heart, and he is working out the salvation that has happened inside. And I'm only depending upon that faith that I've placed in Christ as my Savior. It is faith plus nothing. The thief reached out in faith to Christ for salvation. That was it. And he was saved. Scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and his only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Believe. Scripturally speaking, belief is not just some kind of a, uh, a mental yes to Jesus. It, it's, it's not that. I would go around, if I could, in this room this morning, and I could ask the question to each one of us individually, do you believe in Jesus? And probably most of us here today would say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. A lot of people who don't go to church believe in Jesus. Not all, but a lot believe in Jesus. So we say, But biblical belief in Jesus is more than just a mental, yes, I believe in Jesus. Kind of like, check off the box, do you believe in Jesus or not? Yeah, I'll check the yes box because, you know, I guess that's what I need to do. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. Biblically speaking, belief in Jesus is what we would call faith. It is what we would call commitment. 
Uh, it is what we would kind of consider life change. Biblically speaking, belief in Jesus is not just a check off the box. Yeah, I think Jesus is Jesus, but then nothing else happens in my life. Faith in Christ is a reaching out to Jesus. And even the faith that we place in Christ as our Savior is a gift from God. It is not of ourselves. It is a reaching out to Jesus and saying, Jesus, there is nothing I can do to gain eternal life. And so, Jesus, I am trusting in what you have already done on the cross. I'm placing my faith in what you have done. Paul said, it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. What I need to do is to look at what Jesus has already done on the cross. When Jesus went to the cross, he did everything necessary for our salvation. If not, then what he did was not good enough. That means I've got to make up for something that he didn't do. That's not in Scripture. When Jesus went to the cross, Jesus did everything necessary for your salvation and for mine. Everything. It happened a little over 2,000 years ago. When Jesus went to the cross, he took upon himself your sin and my sin. He died for us. He paid the price for my sin. He took upon himself the sins of the world. All of that was laid upon him. When he went to the cross, he died as the perfect sacrifice, the spotless, sinless lamb of God. He took upon himself my sin and your sin. Paid the price, died for it. Everything that needed to be done for your salvation and mine has already been done in Jesus. And what I need to do is believe that. What I need to do is place my faith in what Christ has already done. That's it. I like to watch old movies, and there are, there are certain movies, they may be old, uh, maybe old westerns or maybe old war movies, and <clears throat> in, uh, in some of those movies, there's a place where, a scene where somebody gets shot or wounded. And maybe it's an old war movie, an old World War II war movie, right? Maybe John Wayne or something like that. And, and one of the, the main characters gets shot. And he is at the point of death. And he turns to John Wayne. And he says, well, John, you're going to have to go on without me. We've been together now for years. We've been through training. We've been through battles. And, but, I, John, I'm just not going to make it anymore. And like this tearjerker scene, you know, and, and uh, I just can't make it. You're just going to have to go without me and leave me here. And the Germans or the Japanese, they're just going to come get me. I just can't go on. And then, then, John Wayne or whoever the John Wayne character <laughs> happens to be, says something like, that's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. I just can't let this happen. Now, I'm going to lean down, 
and I want you to grab my shoulder, and I want you to lean against me, and I'm going to carry you back to camp. And so he reaches out his arm, and he might be crying a little bit, right? And he reaches out his arm, and he says, now, you can do this. Take a step, but lean on me, right? And then take another step. And sometimes he puts them on his back, and, man, they trudge through the mud, and they, and they make it back to camp. The point is this. <clears throat> there is nothing that soldier could do. I mean, honestly, if he were to stay there, he would die. But then John Wayne, or whoever that John Wayne character happens to be, lifts him up and carries him back home. And the world is a wonderful place to live in after that, right? Everything's good. We are like the guy or the girl, whoever it is, that just can't go anymore. Spiritually wounded, shot, broken, left there, and there's, if we were to stay there by ourselves, we'd die. But then there's Jesus. And Jesus reaches down, and Jesus says, that's not going to happen. Follow me. Lean on me. Hold on to me. And he leads us home. I could never get there myself. Apart from him, it would not happen. Because of his love and his grace and his mercy, he sees us where we are. And he does not want us to be overtaken by the enemy, who is the devil. And he takes us home. Has there been a time in your life where you have placed your faith in Christ as your Savior? Has there been a time where you have realized that there's nothing you can do that's ever going to be good enough, that spiritually speaking, you are wounded and on the way to eternal death, but you've reached out to Jesus and you believed him and you placed your faith in him and you know in your heart that he's going to get you home. You're not going to get there yourself. It's only Jesus that will get you. Has that ever happen in your life I'm not asking did you join the church I'm not asking were you baptized I'm not asking are you a nice guy or a nice girl because that has nothing to do with it has there been a time in your life when you have placed your faith in the finished work of Christ only for salvation. When we receive salvation from Christ, there are some neat things that happen. One is our salvation is immediate. It is immediate. It's not like, okay, you're on a trial run now. I'll give you a 90-day test drive and see how you do. <laughs> no. I mean, it's like immediate. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Today. So, when I place my faith in Christ alone as my Savior, I am saved immediately. I am just as saved at that point in my life as somebody like me who's been saved for a long time, been in church, been a minister, doesn't matter. Just does not matter. We are just as saved as anybody else immediately. It is transforming. Paul said, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. No, we cannot earn our salvation by being good people. We just can't do it because nobody's good enough. But when I come to faith in Christ, Scripture tells me I'm a new person. The old me has gone. 
Life changes. Now, it's a, it's a lifelong process of learning that. I get that. I'm still there. I'll be there for a long, long time until the Lord calls me home. But Scripture says we are new people indwelled by the Holy Spirit, capable of now living for the Lord and thinking the way the Lord wants us to think and doing the things that he wants us to do. Our salvation is secure, Jesus said. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Secure. Our salvation is shared. Jesus said that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Yes, it is shared with others. We are witnesses. A witness is someone who simply shares with somebody else what they know to be true in their own lives, in their own experience. So our salvation is shared. We are witnesses. Our salvation is social. And by that I mean this. If we're not careful, I mean, I am saved individually. Nobody can save me. I, that's me and God. It's a decision that I've got to make. But when I do come to faith in Christ, I become part of God's family, and I need that. Scripture says in Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So when I come to faith in Christ, I come into a family of God. Church is about, it's about family. I need you, you need me, you need the guy or the girl next to you, he or she needs you. <clears throat> we grow in our faith in part by helping one another. That's one thing that's great about Sunday school and, and other small groups is that we come together and we study the word together and we let the Lord teach us through one another. I need you in my life, you need me in your life. Not because I'm any good, not because you're any good, but it's because the Lord works through us to help us to grow together in our faith. We need each other. And then my salvation is fulfilling. In Colossians 1.16, Paul said, for by him all things were created, all things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Do you know that you and I were created for God? We were created to live in relationship with him. That relationship that has been destroyed through sin can be reestablished and renewed by God's grace through my faith in what Christ has already done. And when I make that decision, when I'm living the way that the Lord wants me to live through his grace and my faith, I am fulfilling his purpose for me. I was created for and in living for him, I experience a satisfaction in life that, that, that God designed me to have. That I don't get through stuff, through money, through titles, through jobs, through careers, through whatever. I don't get it through stuff. I'm never going to be fulfilled in my life if I'm looking for fulfillment in stuff. Matter of fact, if I'm not looking for fulfillment and I just give my life to Jesus and walk with him, then I'm going to wake up one day and I'm going to say, hey, you know what? I'm being fulfilled. <laughs> but the goal was living for the Lord. And that's when it all clicks. That's when it all happens. 
going to ask you please to bow your heads and close your eyes. In just a minute, we are going to sing our hymn of decision. But I just want to ask you this question. It's a very, very simple question. Have you received Christ as your Savior? Have you placed your faith in the finished work of Christ as your only, only way to salvation? If not, why not this morning? God, thank you for our time together with you. And Father, we simply pray that if there are those here today who need to come forward saying yes to Jesus as Savior, that, Lord, that happens. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of decision is number 177. There's something about that name. Stand as we sing and as you make your decision for our Lord this morning. Our ushers are coming forward. They will receive our morning offering this morning and lead us in our offertory prayer. Lord, we thank you for bringing us here today, Lord. We ask that you take these tithes and offerings and use them in the furthering of your kingdom. We ask this in your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for worshiping with us today. I just want to remind you that next Sunday is a big Sunday, okay? Uh, next Sunday we have our Annie Armstrong Easter offering here at this church, okay? And also we have a fellowship luncheon here at this church. But uh, our missions committee is going to be worshiping in Orange Beach uh, with uh, one of our partner churches, Oasis Church at the Wharf. So if you would like to go with the missions committee, Please see Jamie Hilden 
uh, for more information about that. So we have three big things going on just next week. So please key into our Facebook uh, for stuff about that. But let's stand and sing our way out this morning. Are you wise? Are you wise?